Now, the sphere of environmental, social and corporate governance, or ESG for short, is all-embracing, covering issues ranging from approaches to climate change, labour practices, data security, diversity and business ethics, among others. Brown Brothers Harriman is a privately owned and managed financial services firm which has been in business for over 200 years. Adrian Whelan, Global Head of Regulatory Intelligence and member of BBH's Executive Sustainability Council, which is responsible for all of BBH's activities and reporting related to its sustainability initiatives, joins us now from Dublin to explain how the organisation is planning for the future. Adrian, it's really good to see you. I mean, look, you are speaking at Cybos this year on the topic of ESG, but in terms of sustainable business and a better world. So what does this mean for BBH? Yeah, it's great to be here, guys. Thanks. Um, and again, sustainability and ESG, the terms are used interchangeably, but they're becoming increasingly important for banks on a global basis. It's a huge topic of discussion. You can see it at Cybos already mentioned at many of the sessions. Um, but overall, what it really means is banks are being judged by new parameters, which they've never been judged before. Um, we used to look at profit and loss and balance sheets and compare and contrast, but now it's other things. And you gave a laundry list there. It's how do you engage with your stakeholders? So your communities, the environment, your place in the world, your employees, how are you treating them from a various... Um, so it goes way beyond profit and loss and money. And, and again, it's a challenge for industry because we've never been uh, judged by these non-financial measures before. So the entire industry is going through an evolution. Adrian, it is very good to see you, sir. And I've got a nice big question for you to get your teeth stuck into. What is the future of banking, in your opinion? Yeah, that's a pretty big question. And again, so sustainability is at the core of a lot of things. And we ju I just referenced ESG. So that's the non-financial measures. But the other thing is how sustainable is banking? Banking as a concept. And here at Cybos, we hear it already. The challenge of banks is can they harness the secular trend of technology? Can banks become data and digital? And the biggest shift in all this data, digital and technology for banks is for many years, we've been ultra competitive against each other. And what you're actually seeing is a shift towards strategic partnerships. So you're starting to see shared services, shared infrastructure, co-source solutions, banks working together rather than against each other to give better outcomes to the customers. And in essence, when you look at the future of banking and probably everything that the common thread of Cybos is collaboration, not just competition. That's the future of banking. And are you working with trusted partners who can bring mutual benefits to each other as businesses, but ultimately to your customers? Right, so given what you've just said, Adrian, how is BBH uh, evolving to keep pace with this? Because this is a picture which is constantly shifting in its shape. Yeah, so again, I, I'd pick up the point of partnerships um, and it, it manifests itself in our business a number of ways. Uh, Data flows are hugely important. Data aggregation, normalization. I don't want to get into too many buzzwords, but again, we have a piece of technology that we use to connect ourselves with the ecosystem and can be used by others to connect with the ecosystem. It's called infomedery. And basically it's a connectivity and middleware that actually joins uh, different data points together. That drives a number of different products that we uh, use to help our clients, but that we're also doing to sell in and of itself to our clients to help them with their data journey. And um, there's a big project ongoing at the moment, ISO 2022. Again, that's a large data and messaging project that almost all, every entity at Cybos is involved in some way, shape or form. That's really driving a view of data that's not just point to point, it's, it's a shared platform of looking at, at data in, in, in the round. The other thing that's driving our business forward at the moment um, is, is our platform, our data platform called Infuse. And again, what that in essence does is takes data wherever it is and displays it on the user interface 
to your client. So again, the, 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 the front end user technology is increasingly becoming important, particularly as we sit here, okay, in COVID and, and remote access. Nobody really wants to send paper based reports or multiple reports from different uh, vendors and agents and aggregate them themselves. They expect banks to behave like other platforms that they use in their real life. So a single window into a single window of data that's easy to navigate and easy to read. And again, that, to go back to the first question, is the future of banking. As both a bank and a servicer of banks, you're in a unique position. But, but what are these clients looking at more specifically? Yeah, I suppose it's two things. Um, and again, I, I, I've read and I, I, I've seen a lot written uh, this week in Cybos about white labelling. And what white, white labelling in essence is, is a bank such as a BBH taking either our entire technology stack and selling it to another bank so they can leverage the things that we use. But increasingly, that's becoming modular. So they'll take an element of things that we do, the technology and the services. So it could be um, financial exchange, FX, it could be securities lending, or it could be something else. And in essence, another bank will take BBH technology and utilize it for themselves. And I think there's been a lot of talk about whether you take the full technology stack or whether you take little bits and pieces. And that goes back to shared infrastructure and shared services. Again, that's what we're working with our clients a lot on at the moment, um, using things that we do in our business to share or sell to them to empower their business. And it goes back to it's more about collaboration than competition into the future. And what's in the pipeline then in terms of uh, smart solutions for your clients? Yeah, so the future is really interesting. So again, in, 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 in the remote environment that we work in, we've started using uh, AI and machine learning to a greater degree. One example of that is a thing we call ANTS, which is very much an AI-driven reconciliation tool. And we use that in pockets of our business for, again, uh, custody and accounting reconciliations. It's a bit dry and boring, if honest, right? But it is, it is a transformational use of AI and machine learning. And what we want to use is that small corner of our business where we're already using it. We want to infuse that throughout our entire business. So we have a proof of concept. We have a proof that uh, machine learning can work and be additive to your business. And we want to, in the future, deploy that across, across a wider range of our products. Um, and it's great to actually have a, a, a proof of concept because I go back to banking has to be about trust. We now trust the technology to do what it needs to do. And now we think we can deploy it on a wider basis. And I do think we're at a tipping point and COVID hasn't got a lot of good within it. But I think there are silver linings in banking around digitization and smart technologies. And I think the future is very, very bright for those that embrace them. OK, Adrian, we have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us. This is your first time on Cybos TV, so well done. Great conversation. Thanks very much.